Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we are going to talk about addressing the issue of endogeneity using Gaussian copula. Just quickly have a look to this graph on the screen. You will see that the sales of ice cream and drowning accidents per month are highly correlated. On x-axis, there is a cubic meters of ice cream sold and on y-axis, deaths by drowning. Quite surprising, there is a linear relationship. We have taken the data points at different time intervals, that is according to the months. And when we pass a line, we get some a linear relationship. And we, fee, and we get the, that these two variables are highly correlated. How is it possible? Let us try to understand. Now, this may lead to two theories. That is, selling ice cream somehow causes more drowning accidents. So, let me correct this causes more drowning incident, uh, accidents and people are drowning. If people drown, then the ice cream sales will increase. Both of them are the weird theories. But why is it happening? So let's try to understand. So first is a hypothesis A and second is a hypothesis B. To investigate the hypothesis A, we would close all the ice cream stands or give free ice cream to see if it changes the number of drowning accidents or not. After running the pad sample t-test, we will probably find no significant change between selling ice cream and people drowning. Naturally, we will find that result only. So this will falsify hypothesis A. And we should congrats ourselves on good science. But we cannot call it a day because falsifying A says nothing about B. But what about the B? We have proved that, in, uh, that if ice cream sales increases, drowning increases. But if more people drown, thus ice cream sales increases, that's also to be tested. The correct scientific way is to tie some people to a rock and drop them into the ocean to increase the drowning to see if we sell more ice cream or not. This example is given in a very reputed book. But we will not find any significance in hypothesis B also. Now the question arises, that in both the scenario, we will not get any significance value of the test. Then why, why is it so that our graph is showing some relationship? Okay, the answer is there are confounders. That is a season is present. So a confounder is an extraneous variable whose presence affects the variables being studied so that the results do not reflect the actual relationship between the variables under the study. Now, how confound our, confounders are working? That there is a summer season. And in summer season, the ice cream sales increases. And in summer seasons, more people go near to the beach for swimming. And if they don't know the swimming, they get drowned. So it is a season which is depicting the relationship between the ice cream sales and the drowning incidents. Now, let us try to understand this concept. The independent variable is sales of ice cream. The dependent variable is drowning. We are able to get some relationship. Now, let us assume that there is some error term. So, this error term is also known as disturbance term. Dependent variable is also affected by the disturbance term. The error term considers all other unmeasured causes. See, here we have said that the drowning is only happening because of the sale of ice creams. There may be other reasons also which have been captured in error term. Now, the independent variable also depends on something which is considered to be the U. It, now, let us consider the problem of endogeneity. It may be very well possible that the unknown cause may be affecting dependent and independent variables simultaneously. We don't know the unknown cause. So, there exists a correlation between X and Y. Because of the presence of this, we are able to get the relationship between X and Y. Now, this variable which we have seen is a season, which is considered to be the confounders. Now, when we introduce Z into the model, 
we want to see the effect of confounders on dependent and independent variable. It is quite possible that there will not be any relationship between independent and dependent variable. See, there will not be any relationship. But because of this confounder, we are able to get the relationship. The relationship is exhibited between dependent and independent variable. This means that the correlation between dependent dependent and independent variable will be exactly zero. But because Z is causing X and Y simultaneously, we are able to get the relationship. This is the problem of endogeneity. Now, how we will identify the endogeneity? So, market, marketing research are increasingly taking the advantage of the instrumental variable that's a Gaussian copula. The Gaussian copula approach allows researchers and practitioners to detect and correct for endogeneity in PLS SEM. Now, how we can do this in PLS SEM? Let's try to understand. I'll request all my viewers to kindly refer my previous videos of this lecture series so that you can understand the flow of this lectures. Here, job satisfaction is affecting the staying intention of an employee. Environmental perception is affecting the staying intention of an employee. Organizational commitment is affecting the staying intention of an employee. Co-workers, behavior of co-workers is affecting the staying intention of an employee. Now, I want to... I want to check that is there any presence of endogeneity between job satisfaction and staying intention. So, I'll activate the Gaussian copula from here. When you will click on it, the Gaussian copula will get activated. Now, the authors have recommended some approach. First, we will run single copula. That is from job satisfaction to staying intention, single copula. Environmental perception to staying intention, single copula. Organizational commitment to staying intention, single copula. And co-workers to staying intention, single copula. Okay. So, let me keep this and calculate bootstrapping. Start the calculation. Open the report. Go in path coefficients. Now for the absence of endogeneity, make sure, see this is Gaussian copula, GC, of job satisfaction to the staying intention. The p-value of this should be more than 0 0.05, which means that this is completely insignificant. Endogeneity is absent. Quite good. I again repeat. In this case, the p-value, the desirable p-value should be more than 0 0.05 so that we can see, we can say that the endogeneity is not present. Now, you can copy this thing on Excel. So, this is the first single copula I have copied. Okay, let's go back. Now, I will run. I will again take this and I will run the single copula for environmental perception to staying intention. Calculate, bootstrapping, start the calculation. I'll open the report. Again, I'll go in path coefficients. And you will have to see the p-value again. It's more than 0 0.05. Quite good. Now to save the time, what I have done is, I have already generated the slides so that we can save the time. So I'll start with the single copula. It's p-value. Again, single copula. It's p-value. Organizers commitment to staying in tension, single copula, its p-value more than 0 0.05, quite good. Single copula, co-workers to staying in tension, its p-value is more than 0 0.05, this also is quite good. Once we have completed this process, we will start two-way copula. And here also the desirable is, 
that the p-value of both this cos and copula at the same time should be more than 0 0.05. Let us check. Is it so? Quite good. Now, 1 and 3. Previously, it was 1 and 2. Now, it is 1 and 3. Again, the p-value is more than 0 0.05. Quite good. Now, 1 and 4. This is 2 copula and we have to see the p-value. Then comes the 3 copula. Okay, this combination is left out. 2 with 3. P-value more than 0 0.05. Quite good. Then comes 2 and 4. P-value more than 0 0.05. Quite good. Now comes 3 copula, 1, 2 and 3. We have to see the p-value of all this. You can see our GC from job satisfaction to staying intention, GC environmental perception to staying intention, GC organizational commitment to staying intention. All of them are having p-value more than 0 0.05 and it conveys that there is no problem of endogeneity. Then we have to take the combination of 1, 2 and 4. Again, the p-value is more than 0 0.05. Now, I will have to take the combination 1, 3 and 4. Then, I am taking the combination 2, 3, 4. Again, the p-value is zero, more than 0 0.05. So, 3 copula is over. Now, I will have to generate the list for 4 copula, 4 Gaussian copula. You can see the results. All of them are having p-value more than 0 0.05. Now, what you will have to do is, at the same time, keep on copying this thing in Excel. So, I have simply copied this in Excel. Next thing you have to do is, select all of them and delete this. Sample means standard deviation and t-statistics are deleted and keep only these values. Okay. Now you can copy this and take it into the word file. Now how will I report the result? So first I start with one copula and here it is written. Uh, it has generated one copula job satisfaction to staying intention. Then environmental perception to staying intention. So you will have to discuss the p-value of this is more than 0 0.05. So all one copula we will consider, then two copula we will consider. You can see here, two copula, then three copula and discuss their p-values. The desirable is it should be more than 0 0.05. Then three copula and in last four copula. Now you will be wondering that here we got the p-value more than 0 0.05 but what to do if we are having p-value less than 0 0.05 what to do so if you get p-value less than 0 0.05 it means that there is a presence of endogeneity and it has to be addressed now there can be three reasons to it the first one is omitted variable bias in model, if you have not included any variable that may affect the dependent variable, you have missed out. It may cause omitted variable bias. For example, let, let us go back. Here, in independent variable, you missed out something. Definitely, it is going to affect the dependent variable and that is known as a omitted variable bias. Now, let us try to understand the another reason for it. The another reason is simultaneity you are running a causal relationship between x and y why uh, why there are not any chances that there can be a relationship between x to y also let me try to explain this in our model see according to the literature or the model which has been specified job satisfaction is affecting the staying intention of an employee 
but there can be an equal chances that the model is running like this. So if there is a presence of simultaneity in your model, it can give rise to endogeneity. The another reason for the endogeneity is a measurement error. That is, X is not captured accurately. The independent variable is not captured accurate, accurately or there is a flaw. There is a measurement error in, in capturing the independent variable and because of this, we are getting the problem of endogeneity. The last problem is a common method variance. Now, let me try to explain this in a very simple language. You ask publicly someone that do you drink alcohol or not? The respondents will give a socially desirable answer. And, and, and as the person is in public, his, ask, his response will be based on this. So the concept here is at, as there is a presence of lurking variable, you will get the relationship which is not existing or you will get, ah, sorry, <clears throat> you will get the relationship which is existing both the way the possibilities are there. So that is known as a common method variance. So for more videos on Smart PLS 4, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the like button. You can refer my playlist in which I have already uploaded many videos of Smart PLS 4.